Estos no son los Alpes franceses, esto es la cordillera cantábrica en Asturias. Acá estoy en el, en el llano de Asiera, un lugar donde nos quedamos un par de días. Acabamos de ver osos, no les puedo contar porque no, no les puedo mostrar, porque fueron unos franceses que tenían unos telescopios gigantes con que pudimos ver esos osos pardos que hay aquí en esta zona. La verdad que es un lugar increíble, no tiene nada que envidiarle a los Alpes. Pero bueno, es parte de nuestro viaje, es parte de este informe sobre ANSI y en ese camino queríamos mostrarle un poquito este, este lugar maravilloso que es las Asturias de Quirós. I stand alone in the Chesapeake Bay Against a gray horizon But a house that's not shelter is not a home And the seas, they are arising And the seas, they are arising Oh, once I was a tall, strong oak In my branches many did slumber Till I was felled by the stroke of the axe And sawn into shingle and timber And sawn into shingle and timber They carried me here to this island And built me with shutters and gables For the fisherman wanted to shelter his kin He believed I was sturdy and stable He believed I was sturdy and stable For many a year I was part of this town A place they could eat, sleep, and play And life went on inside my walls And they thrived on the bounty of the bay And they thrived on the bounty of the bay I sheltered this family through many a storm And I watched as they worked on the water And though I was warm, they cared for me dearly I was home for their sons and their daughters I was home for their sons and daughters In the mind of a man two hundred years Stands a test of time But in truth it's only a blink of the eye Lynn Tomilson es un artista estadounidense, animadora independiente, multipremiada por sus obras de carácter poético, con imágenes expresionistas y temas ambientales y sociales. Vive en Baltimore con su marido y sus dos hijos. Uno de ellos, Sam, la acompañó en esta nota. Cuando uno piensa en Estados Unidos, en América del Norte, visto desde Uruguay, se imagina marines invadiendo países. Yo, yo veo eh, como algo rechazable, casi siempre me pasa eso. Sé perfectamente que hay en Estados Unidos gente muy pura y muy sana y, y muy poética. 
y tus animaciones a mí me parecieron muy poéticas y por eso quise tener una entrevista contigo. Si no entendí mal, habla de una, de una casa en un lugar de agua, de mar, que estaba peligrando, quizás por culpa de la ecología. So are, yes. are you talking about the Ballad of Holland Island House, that film? Habla de eso. Right, that house is it, it's a real true story mm -hmm. about a house on an island in the Chesapeake Bay near where we live. And the house was there and it was part of a thriving fishing village for many years. And then both erosion and rising sea levels took away the, the village, leaving just this one house by itself. And it stood there for a long time until eventually the storms washed it away. So when I saw a picture of the house sitting alone in the water, the loneliness of that house uh, spoke to me and, and I thought it would be a good story to tell from the house's point of view. The music is, is you? One, no, for this one, for a ballad, I, I helped some with the narrative, but the music was, um, uh, you wrote the, wrote the song, the you wrote the lyrics, and then this, the tune was two musicians, um, Anna Roberts folk musicians. Anna and Lo Elizabeth Lapel, named but, um, Anna and Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, but I did. I helped create the story along with my mom. And in the new film, I wrote the I wrote the song, the lyrics. Yeah. Uh, sort of uh, Appalachian music okay. from the mountains in the, you know, uh, maybe West Virginia. They sing very uh, traditional songs. So they told me it sounds like you want to write a ballad. And so I, I looked into ballad structures and I wrote the lyrics. And then she sang it. Um, and I was able to work from a scratch track. Um, tu, tu animación es muy plástica, muy del manual. Eh, ¿Trabajas siempre así? ¿Tienes siempre, tú, tú además de hacer animación, pintas o cosas de esas? It's clay on glass. So it's a oil-based modeling clay, like plastilina on plastilina. glass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's thicker than paint. Yes. And, but it's very malleable, it doesn't dry out. Uh, it comes in different colors, so I've been doing that for many years. Okay. I like how it can so transform. Morphing, yeah, yeah morphing. morphing. La, la animación que, que yo vi, las, las cosas que he visto tuyas, son como una obra completa, o sea, la música y la, y la animación, las dos cosas van muy de la mano. Es como una creación única. That's right. So, in the Elephant Song, the new film, um, we worked on the music first. So the music yeah. was set first. I worked with Sam. Uh, we came up with the story, he wrote all the lyrics, and then we worked with the band to do a beautiful recording and uh, instrumentation, and then two singers, and that was a wonderful process, and uh, really great to work with my son. When you, when you figure out the story, knowing that it's going to be a filmed story, then it's possible to write a song that, that works in that way, you know, and that's something very, really important. Yo tengo entendido que tenés como un movimiento, como, un, como un, una actividad por, por la ecología. That's definitely true. It's sort of a, a mission I've set myself to try to tell stories about the environment from another point of view. So instead of from a person's point of view, it's from a house's point of view, or the dog with the elephant, it's told from the dog in the menagerie. And that was an important thing to do it from the dog's point of view because a dog has a more complicated relationship with human right. beings. Right. When we, when we talked about, we had the farmer and the elephant, right? But there's no ambiguity there, right? The farmer, you know, you're always going to end up, basically, you're going to see the elephant as sort of pure and the farmer, right, as not that. And so we thought about what's going to be in between, right? What's going to be in the middle between the, the sort of wild animal impulse or the, the completely domesticated human, right? And so the dog is stuck in this liminal space, which is narratively perfect, it, and it creates opportunities for conflict and growth. a story left to tell but my friend obed the elephant that's a tale i know all too well eh, eh, tienes un estudio tú trabajas en tu, tu tablero 
o tienes un estudio afuera de tu casa o es adentro de tu casa eh, o tienes eh, más colaboradores cómo es todo esto yeah, yeah so I have a little <laughs> office uh, off my bedroom um, it's a very small space and I just have a, a digital DSLR and dragon frame and uh, it's a down shooter yes. stand and I work about this big ¿Sí? with the plastic little. Scene, little. little yeah and the little it's good because then you see all the marks okay you know it's not too tidy yes um, so I work pretty little okay. and uh, You know, it's stop motion, so it's as I work, uh -huh. it's destroying what I made. So at the end of making my film, I had 11 frames left from where I cut away. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. ¿Cómo financias tus proyectos? You know, I, I'm a professor, uh -huh. so it can be my research. So I have a little help with travel or something like that, but mostly it's self-funded. I have the software, I have the camera. It's just a lot of time. Y no, no, no hay posibilidades de financiar por la vía de, de no sé, subsidios estatales. De... The state arts funding is well intentioned and they're great people, but they, you know, they are very, they have a very small amount to give, you know. So, you know, it's not, it's not enough to really live off. You can maybe do one project, but Ajá. it's hard. Y, y aquí en Nancy, ¿tienes expectativa? Tuviste, por ejemplo, encuentros con productores como para poder hacer algo coproducido con alguien. Not yet. It could be interesting. It could be interesting. I think uh, some friends have made a film in France. Uh, they were from Baltimore, so I know it can be done. It, it could be interesting. Y, y hay, hay un movimiento de animación en, en Baltimore. There's, I think, four, four, five universities that have animation programs, mm -hmm. but there's not any big production company. There's nowhere really. They should form a collective or something. Yeah. In, in general, with the arts in Baltimore, it, Baltimore is, you know, it's a city, it's a real city, but it's a small city. So, but everybody's very friendly. So you'll have a small, very friendly group in almost any different, but especially with film and with animation. Yo cerraría con esto, este, un agradecimiento por dejarnos conversar un poco con, con los dos, que forman una dupla, haciendo un trabajo muy sensible, y muy, muy agradable para la retina y para el alma, ¿no? Y para el pienso. Thank you. We're so honored to have been invited to talk to you. It's a great pleasure to have someone speak so thoughtfully about our work. Mm -hmm. Sí, estamos muy agradecidos. And Sam has always been a big admirer of Uruguay. Uruguay. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great country. Yeah. Bueno, lo veremos allá. Thank you.